My name is Luc Bovens and I will tell you something about the uh, Department of Philosophy, Logic and Scientific Methods. And I'd like to start actually with uh, some historical details. Um, at the LSE, we really have a long history of reflecting on, on the practice of the sciences and the social sciences. And this goes all the way back to the 20s. Um, in, in 1921, um, we had a, a, a philosopher of science and also an historian of science named Abraham Wolf who was teaching the first year students um, one of their four core courses. And this course was actually called Logic and Scientific Methods. And so you see, that's where ultimately the name of the department will come from. Now, the, the kind of things that Abraham Wolf was teaching at that time were very much of the core subjects of philosophy of science. And when we look back at his textbook, The Essentials of Scientific Method, we see these core questions come up. These are things like, you know, what's the nature of science? Um, things like, what is explanation in the sciences? What are scientific laws? Also questions of philosophy of probability and philosophy of statistics. And he was always trying to think about these issues in a very practical context, context that is relating it to, to the history of science and various episodes in the history of science. Now, he taught in the school from 1921 to 1941. Now, I go back a couple of years, 1938, and that's what brings us to Karl Popper. Karl Popper is leaving Austria at the time, these are the pre-war times, and he's fleeing from Austria, going to New Zealand. Now he's teaching in New Zealand in 1941, when Abraham Wolf resigns, and the school is looking for an, another philosopher of science, a new philosopher of science. Now he at that time was writing um, the, a manuscript of the famous The Enemies of the Open Society. And that is what caught Friedrich von Hayek's attention. Now Friedrich von Hayek, who was teaching at the school at the time, he tried to get Popper to come to the LSE. There's a long story here, but just to cut the long story short, we go to 1946, January 1946, and this is when Popper arrives at the LSE. Now, with Popper comes really a very rich intellectual tradition all surrounding philosophy of science, and I would say in particular philosophy of the natural sciences. He brings a whole number of exciting people to the school, uh, one of them of course being Imre Lakatos. But now of course we're 30 years later again, and the question is, you know, where are we today? Yeah. Now I think in many ways we should say that the, the way that the department is today, it's very much still the hotbed of philosophical activity that it was in Popper's days. But at the same time, we're evolved and we, we do look quite different. How is it that we look different? Well, let's first say how it is that we look the same. Yeah? In many ways, we look the same. We're still interested in a kind of philosophy that is continuous with the practice of the sciences. That sort of core issue is really still with us. And when I say the sciences, I don't just mean the natural sciences. We've definitely broadened in that respect from Popper's days. We're thinking about philosophy of the social sciences as well and philosophy of economics. So let me say how we're how we're different and sort of, you know, point to sort of five different things that really give a good picture, I think, of the department today. In the first place, we're very eager to think about methodological questions in the sciences, conceptual questions in the sciences. Uh, we think about sort of, you know, contemporary disagreements that scientists have or about the nature of scientific models and so on. It's still very much a reflection on the sciences expanded now to the social sciences and economics. Secondly, I think what really ties us together as a group of philosophers is just this topic of rationality. Yeah? Now, I would say rationality broadly conceived here. We're thinking here about issues of philosophy of probability, decision theory, game theory, formal epistemology. I think that is really what brings us together as a group, that is, as a group of philosophers of science, philosophers of social science, but also as moral and political philosophers. It's all around this core notion of rationality. That brings me to my third and my fourth point, really. Um, so, in, in, in our philosophizing, what we really aim to do is to make a difference to the actual practice 
of the sciences, and that's not just the, the natural sciences, but also the social sciences and economics. And in making a difference to the actual practice of the sciences, we also try to have, and this is my fourth point, we try to have an impact. Um, we try to have an impact on policy issues. Now, we're very lucky that we are located in, in, a, in one of the world leading institutions for the social sciences and policy making. And we do take advantage of, of that location. So we try to work out you know, various interdisciplinary projects with researchers, academics in other institutions. Like for instance, we work with economics, we work with the European Institute, we work with the Center for the Analysis of Time Series, uh, we have collaborations in international relations. And so the sort of issues that we're thinking about in these collaborations are issues, for instance, of um, related to the global disease burden or certain questions um, that fit into experimental economics. Um, another you know, more specific project here was when we're thinking about you know, detecting child abuse through fMRI scans. Is it possible to do that? Um, we're thinking too about um, European Union policy with respect to asylum, with respect to setting the voting rates for the European Council. I mean, these are the sort of projects that philosophers are engaged, engaged in and can bring their own philosophical input to in these interdisciplinary collaborations with practicing economists and social scientists. And, and, and being placed in the LSE, of course, is just a fantastic opportunity to do precisely those kinds of things, and we're very grateful for that. And then finally, when we're talking about impact on policy issues, of course, there are the normative issues in front of us. Now, I'm proud to say that we really do have a very strong group right now of moral and political philosophers as well. And these moral and political philosophers are sort of of the same type really as our philosophers of science. That is, these moral and political philosophers are interested in the practice of the social sciences and they're actually interested in real life societal problems. These are the sort of things that they're working on. Just to give you some examples, they're working on issues like the ethics of risk, issues like normative issues related to the measurement of inequality or issues of global justice. So that brings me to wrap up really my picture of what the department is all about today. Now I should say that the department is not just an isolated unit here. It is really part of a much more global net of a, well, a global network. Let's just keep it to, to London here. Um, first, within the, within the LSE, I like to think of philosophy as, you know, under sort of three prongs really, and we call it philosophy at LSE. What are these three prongs? There is the department, there is the center for the philosophy of the natural and social sciences, and there is the forum for European philosophy. Now, I told you a lot about the department already, so let's move on to the center. Yeah? The center for the philosophy of the natural and social sciences is, is, a, an, is an institute which hosts a, a wide variety of projects and also hosts a large number of visitors. Um, the Forum for European Philosophy is really our window, our window onto the world. Yeah? We try to, to, to showcase through the Forum what is going on in the, in the department, what is going on in CPNSS, that is the Center for the Philosophy of Natural and Social Science, and uh, the Forum really puts out a, a wide range of, of very well attended events with very successful podcasts attached to it. So these three things, that is the Department of Philosophy, Logic and Scientific Method, CPNSS, that is the Center for the Philosophy of the Natural and Social Sciences and the Forum for European Philosophy, that they together constitute what I like to think of as philosophy at LSE. Furthermore, there's a lot of cognate faculty in the LSE. That is, especially, I would say, in the government department, there's a lot of fellow philosophers. We had a lot of philosophical activity going on in um, the government department. Um, and then furthermore, we, you, we really have to think about the LSE as one institution in the larger University of London. Now, if you look at the various other universities in the University of London, in the University of London yeah, places like UCL, KCL, and so on, 
many of them have very strong philosophy departments as well. And then there is this, this core institute in the University of London, which is called the Philosophy Institute. And that really is the overarching institution for philosophy in the University of London at large. So we see the LSE as, as a hub in this whole network, really. Good. Well, that brings me to, to the emblem of the school. Um, and the emblem of the school is rerum cognoscere causas. So that's, that's the Latin for knowing the causes of things. Yeah? Um, now, where does this come from? Well, it's a reference to Virgil. And Virgil is talking about Lucretius. Lucretius is an Epicurean from the first century before Christ. Now, what is Lucretius all about? Well, Lucretius writes a, a poem um, named De Rerum Natura about the nature of things. And in that poem, what he talks about is that it is possible to give a fully naturalistic explanation of the world, right? And he thinks that by approaching the world in that way, in a fully naturalistic fashion, he would be able to dispel the fear of death. So that's going, that's our knowing the causes of things. Now, how do we relate to knowing the causes of things, to the emblem of the school? Well, as I said, we stand in this long tradition in the LSE on reflecting on the practice of the sciences. And often this is about causal explanation, giving causal explanation. So what is it for one event to cause another event in the natural world, in the social world? How is it that we go about identifying causes in the natural world, in the social world? This is, of course, the methodology of the sciences and the social sciences. And how is it that that knowledge can be made relevant to practical policy issues? So that's how we relate, in a way, to our rerum cognoscere causas, that is, the emblem of the school. Now, um, back to Lucretius. Well, we don't guarantee your happiness, and we don't guarantee that we can do away with the fear of death. Maybe it'll work, but that is something that we cannot guarantee. But what we can guarantee to you, that is in whatever capacity that you will come to the LSE, be it as a student, be it as a researcher, be it as a visitor, you will encounter a very stimulating intellectual environment. And if you share with us this passion for a kind of philosophy that is continuous with the actual practice of the sciences and that is relevant to policy making. If you share that passion with us, then here is what we can guarantee to you. There will not be a dull moment. Thank you very much.